Good morning and welcome to Acts 21. I don't know about you, but some people are better than others at saying goodbye. You know, those telephone phone conversations where someone says, no, you say goodbye. No, you say goodbye. And, you know, it's interesting. But someone once said it's sad, but sometimes moving on with the rest of your life starts with a goodbye. Now, in chapter 21 of the book of Acts, we see some goodbyes and some moving on. Paul knew that God had called him to return to Jerusalem. And yet he also knew it was the most dangerous place for him because this was where his powerful enemies lived. And it's strange because on at least two occasions in this chapter, he is warned not to go there by really spiritual people. We see in verse four, these believers prophesied through the Holy Spirit that Paul should not go on to Jerusalem. Then in verse 10, several days later, a man named Agabus, who had the gift of prophecy, arrived from Judea. He came over, took Paul's belt, bound his own feet and hands with it. Then he said, the Holy Spirit declares, so shall the owner of this belt be bound by the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem and turned over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the local believers all begged Paul not to go on. But Paul's response is interesting. You see, he was not wanting to disobey God, but he also knew that the warning was not to stop him going, but to remind him that indeed his his return was full of risks. He said in verse 13, why all this weeping? You are breaking my heart. I am ready not only to be jailed at Jerusalem, but even to die for the sake of the Lord Jesus. And then in verse 14, when it was clear that we couldn't persuade him, we gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. You know, sometimes God asks us to make some tough decisions and there are risks involved. Other sincere, well-meaning Christians may even advise us against it. Or oftentimes, you know, when that happens, that's a good reason to stop and to think. And Paul did that. I believe that he had taken this decision seriously. He knew what the risk was, but he also knew what God's will was for him. He didn't do it because he didn't want to listen to people. He didn't do it out of a bad motive. He was doing it because he knew God had called him, even if God had warned him. You know, this reminds me a little bit of the story of Jackie Pullinger, a music graduate who felt called by God to missions, but she was unable to find support from any missionary organisation. Then she sought advice from a local minister who told her that she should buy a ticket for a boat and go as far as she could get and to pray to know to when to get off the boat. Wow. At first she wanted to go to Africa, but then she had a dream that impressed on her the idea of going to Hong Kong. And so she followed the advice of the vicar and she went to Hong Kong by boat in 1966. The rest, as they say, is history. She spent decades ministering to the people of Hong Kong, particularly in an area called the Walled City, and saw God do amazing things in many lives. She knew God had called her and she knew that she had to go. And so for each one of us, when we know God has called us, we need to listen to his voice. And it might not always be easy to do that. But when we know it's God's voice, God will lead us and God will guide us, even if that decision or choice is a difficult one. Have a great day today and I hope that you enjoy today's chapter.